Attention! McCarthy Math Academy proudly presents the Math FSA Boot Camp Series. Hello everyone, I'm Miss McCarthy and I am so excited that you are here. are more than a test score. We don't want you stressing out about this test. We just want you to activate your greatness within. And you might be saying, But Miss McCarthy, listen, I know that math is your jam, but math and I, yeah, we're not really the best of friends. You may have struggled in the past, and you know what? Good. Struggle is necessary because struggle makes us stronger. If we go over something in these videos that you're like, hmm, that skill didn't quite click yet, I'm gonna send you to more videos to help you practice. Your teachers and I, we can expose you to all kinds of tools and strategies, but you have to choose to use them. You have to choose to own them. Imagine opening up that test and feeling so excited to throw down your best. This can be your reality. So now is the time that you need to activate the person you were born to be and let's do this. Are you ready to throw 100% focus, hustle, and heart into this right now? That's what I'm talking about, yes! Okay, let's go ahead and jump on into today's episode of the Math FSA Bootcamp Series. And <laughs> I almost forgot to say, uh, let me teach ya. What is up, third graders? It's me, Miss McCarthy, and you are here at the Math FSA Boot Camp Series for third grade. This is video number five. Y'all, I'm so excited that you're here today. Today, we're actually going to be working with properties of multiplication. Now, this year, you should have learned about three different properties. The commutative property of multiplication, the distributive property of multiplication and the associative property of multiplication. We're gonna be using those today. And this video will involve those types of properties. Now, if you're like, oh my gosh, Miss McCarthy, I totally forgot all the multiplication properties. That's okay. We're gonna work it out here today, but I'm also gonna send you in the direction to help refresh your memory for videos that you can look for to help you with those different properties, okay? We're gonna go ahead and get started. If you have your worksheet, which I hope you do, go ahead and pause the video. And I want you to complete number one and number two on your own. After you do that, come on back to check your work. Now, if you're like, wait a minute, Miss McCarthy, what worksheet are you talking about? I've totally got your back, okay? There's a link in the description box below or somewhere around this video that will take you to the worksheets that you can print out and download. The videos are totally free. If you want the worksheets, it is a little bit extra, but they are worth it. All right, so if you have your worksheet, now is the time to press pause, throw down your best, and then press play when you are ready to come back and see me. Bye. All right, everybody, welcome back. Okay, so first, make sure you put your name up there because you said that you were ready to throw down your best. We'll talk about this in a second. All right, so let's read the question. Well, first of all, it's kind of nice to identify the question type first. I'm seeing four different answer choices. So what kind of problem do you think this is? Yeah, it's a multiple choice question. Multiple choice. So if you did not jot that down, go ahead and jot that down now. All right, let's read it. It says, which of the following expressions, remember that expressions have no what? No equal sign. There is no equal sign. If there was an equal sign, it would be called an equation, but an expression are just like these guys down here and you don't see an equal sign. So which of the following expressions have a value, value means amount. Here I'm marking up my text to make it make sense even more. So make sure that you're doing that too if you have not already. Have a value or an amount that is equivalent. What does equivalent mean? It means equal, right? That is equivalent, I'm gonna put it down here. Equivalent to six times nine. Before we even jump in, let's go ahead and determine what would be the value of six times nine. So when I see six times nine, that means six groups of 
equal thing, six groups of nine. So if I do that, it's gonna be six groups. And I'm gonna draw nine in each. Okay, so nine in each. And now what I can do is I can count by fives first. So five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. I'm just gonna jot that down for the five, 30. And now we go back. 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38. Count with me. 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54. 50. Four. Now, you could have also here used the multiplication mashup, which is a song that I've created to help you get faster with your facts. And I could choose the six song. Watch this. Hey, sixes, I just met ya. You're kind of crazy. Six, 12, and 18. 24, and 30. 36, and 40. Two, and 48. 54. See? Nine times. 54. Or I could have selected the nine song and got six fingers. Watch this. We got those nines. Nine, 18, 27, I'm just beginning. 36, 45, 54, or got to 54 again, right? Helps you get it faster so you don't have to draw it all out. However, drawing it out is an excellent strategy if you don't know the multiplication mashup, so use it. Okay, so now that we know that six times nine equals 54, now we have to go and see which of these expressions also have a value that is equal to 54. So let's look at choice A. Choice A says nine times six. Well, wait a minute, six times nine? Flip flop those factors, nine times six. That's the commutative property of multiplication. So here I could even write commutative property. And the commutative property of multiplication states that if you change the factors around, you'll still arrive at the same product or the same answer. So nine times six does equal what? 54, so this one is gonna be equal. Now, should we just go ahead and mark A and forget about the rest of them? Everybody say no! Yeah, we have to go through each one and make sure. So here we have five times one times nine. And these right here, do you see these guys right here? They are called parentheses. Everybody say parentheses. And parentheses say, hey, solve me first. You say it, hey, solve me first. So whatever is inside of those parentheses, we need to solve first, okay? So five times one, what does five times one equal? Five, right? Anything times one is itself. So this would be five, and then we have times nine. Five times nine is not equivalent to six times nine. In fact, five times nine is 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, you'll know them all shortly. 30, 35, and 40, and then there's 45, that's 45, which kind of has the same numbers as 54, just in a different order, but it's not equal. So what can we do with choice B? Eliminate. Now let's look at choice C. Here we have parentheses that say, hey, solve me first for five times nine, and then another pair right there. Hey, solve me first. So we're gonna solve five times nine first, and then we're gonna solve one times nine. So five times nine, we just found that it was 45, right? And this says times, be careful with your signs. 45 times, what's one times nine? Nine, right? And oh my goodness, guys, 45 times nine is gonna get us this huge big number that is way higher than 54 is gonna have a way higher value. So here we can write too high and eliminate. Now let's look at choice D. Choice D says three times and then in parentheses, hey, solve me first, three times three. So let's solve three times three first. To do that, we're gonna count by threes. You could draw it out and draw three groups of three, but I'm gonna show you the multiplication mashup way here. 
going to use the three song. Hit me with my threes pretty please. Three, six, nine. So three times three equals nine. Three times nine. And then three times nine is not the same as 54. So we could eliminate it based on that. They're not the same. But also, three times nine equals what? Let's count by threes We're using the multiplication mashup. So hit me with my threes pretty please. Three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, 27. So three times nine is 27, right? Which is most definitely not 54. So what can we do with choice D? Eliminate it, that's right, eliminate. Okay, I've done all the work, I know the right answer is A, but it's not official until I bubble it in. So bubble it in. Don't spend your whole life bubbling it in, just make it nice and dark. Keep it inside the bubble, there. Cool, it's very important that we show our thinking on paper because it shows our journey that we used to get to the answers that we selected. Let's look at number two. Number two, just by looking at the setup real quick, this type of question is called an editing task. It kind of looks like we have multiple choice, but what we're gonna do is read the whole thing and select whichever one we think is right to fill in the blank. Miss Lopez breaks apart an array as shown below. First of all, Miss Lopez is an amazing teacher. I actually did a virtual visit with her class. It was super fun. I would love to do a virtual visit with your class too. So check out my website for more information on that. Um, Miss Lopez, you are awesome. And a shout out to all of Miss Lopez's students at Franklin Academy. All right, back to the problem. So Miss Lopez breaks apart an array as shown. So an array is an array is when we have rows and columns. I'm gonna put R and C for rows and columns. We have rows and we have columns. So therefore this whole thing is an array, okay? And what she does is she breaks it apart using this thing right there, this dotted line. All right, so we are going to complete the statements that are down here. To show how Miss Lopez can use the distributive property of multiplication to find the product. On the FSA, although it's important that you know the commutative property, the associative property, the distributive property, it's not necessary that you know how to identify or match up whichever one is which. So really, this doesn't need to be there quite like that. But we, even if we had no idea what the distributive property was, we can still answer this question. Okay, so for each box, fill in the bubble before the choice that is correct. So we're basically seeing how Miss Lopez broke this down. So here we go. When Miss Lopez breaks apart the array, she creates two arrays that can be expressed as something here. So let's go look at that first. Here's our array. We've got two different ones. We've got, she broke it apart. So this would be one and this would be the second array. Okay, let's figure out what that was. So how many rows down are we going for this one? Just one row down, right? It's just one row. So it's one row of how many in each? Well, let's count them. One, two, three, four, five, six one row of six. So this array, when we break it apart, this section of it could be represented by one times six because we're going down one and over six. Down one and over six. Now when she breaks it apart, here's the second piece of the array. Let's see how many she's going down. Ready? One, two, three, four, five. She goes down five and over how much? Let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six. Obviously it's the same as the other one, six. Okay, I'm just gonna throw some parentheses right there. So she goes down five and over six. So when Miss Lopez breaks apart the arrays, she creates two arrays that can be expressed as, which one of these, A or B, matches what we recorded right over here? Yeah, we have B's, and if we take 
five times six and one times six and join them together or add them, it will be six times six. That will be how she breaks it apart. Okay, so it's not A, it is definitely B. Then she must find the partial products. So products are total, totals when you're multiplying. Partial means just part of. Partial products means part of the total, part of the totals. So then she must find the partial products. So here would be part of the product and here would be part of the product. They're partial products. They're part of the array. Then she must find the partial products of each array, which is 36 plus six or 30 plus six. Well, let's see, five times six would be five, 10, 15, 20, 25, you know them all shortly, 30, 30, right? So it would be 30, and then one times six would be six, which would be choice B. The final product, so when we've combined both of those products, the partial product of 30 plus the partial product of six, the final product is what? What is 30 plus six? 36, good, so it's choice B. So B, 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 all the way around. I'm gonna say final product or final total when you multiply. Look how much thinking is down on that paper to help me slow down and think about the problems. There's a lot of words for number two, y'all, okay? But if you take the time to break it down and understand what each little piece means, then you'll be able to use what you know to figure out what might be a little bit confusing, okay? Let's talk about where you can get some more videos to help you, okay? So the very first thing that I want you to take a look at is McCarthy Math 155. This is a fun, jam-packed, high-energy video series that students across the country are just loving. They love it, they beg their teachers for it, okay? So check it out, you get your free seven day trial. And then if you need some extra help on the different types of properties of multiplication, then you can go to unit three, days 36 through 40. Remember, you'll only be able to see these videos if you are a member or have a free trial. So check those out. I try to make it very affordable. So teachers, please check that out. This is something that you can share with your students and you can always email me with any questions that you have. So check these out, they will help you. Second of all, several years ago, I created a YouTube series called How to Pass the Math FSA. And there is a video with the same standard, the same set of skills that um, you can totally check out. The only thing that you need to keep in mind is that this series was created several years back when the FSA was a computer-based test. So it looks a little bit different. What you're seeing in this video is the most current type of look that it has, um, but still the How to Pass the Math FSA series has great questions that you can take a look at. So check that out. Third, there is the multiplication mashup link to help you get fluent with your multiplication facts. There's also a fun properties of multiplication song music video that kids love as well that I'll link below. Finally, I encourage you to follow me on any social media platform. I've got Instagram at McCarthy Math Academy. I've got Facebook at McCarthy Math Academy. And of course, I'm here on YouTube at McCarthy Math Academy. If you found this video to be helpful or you just enjoyed watching it, please pop that like button for me so I I know that you enjoyed this video lesson um, and that way it encourages me to keep on making some videos for you guys while you're at it go ahead and subscribe that way you're the first to know when I drop a new video now before we go I just want you to know that you were born for a purpose that's right you are the ones that we have been waiting for so find your light and shine it bright as I always say, watch out world because we have a whole generation of world changers that are about to step it up. When you have a choice, choose kind and I will see you all on the next video. Bye.